Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel. So this morning we're doing a quick warm up of some fish. Um, I've been developing a property uh, in my private time called Swimming with the Fishes. Kind of a tongue in cheek play on uh, mob and mafia. And I thought that, you know, we could really develop some fun characters um, and, and get into the, you know, the different types of shape language that is involved in developing a property like this um, as it, uh, um, is attached to different carry, uh, character archetype, arch, archetypes. So, swimming with the fishes, just having some fun today. Um, hopefully I can do this without switching to my other glasses. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Mike definitely has some eye challenges here and there. I love drawing fish, and, I, and I've said this before many, many, many times. Fish, to me, are one of those things that I don't want to call them easy, but they definitely lend themselves to the warm up because the shapes are really com are, are really not complex. They're really simplified, and if you kind of play on, like I was telling you just a moment ago, on some of those character archetypes, like you have, like the kingpin, the the bully, the muscle, the the smarts, you know, all those things that that you can utilize in your character designs. You know, fish, you can do it in pretty much anything, but fish to me, just, you know, really easy to do. <clears throat> so what I'm doing right now, since I have a very large brain, we're doing the, um, kind of the, maybe the money man, the money man archetype. All right, got a little, little bitty chin there. I'm gonna have the eyes come out just a little bit. Big eyes, bulbous eyes, so you can see a lot of uh, kind of maybe some beadiness. Uh, the gills, don't forget the gills, and of course the fins. So this is a very good example of what I would refer to as tangency. So I have created this line that goes into his bottom lip and then I've got this fin that kind of continues the line through there. So I don't want that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and have this back a little bit further. So I can't erase that unfortunately. So it does create a little bit of a mistake. You know, I do make those occasionally. Kind of a little bit stronger of a jaw. Here's the gills, one, two, three. Here's that top fin that comes up, back. You can really get in there and start messing around with a lot of the details, but I don't want to do that. And then we're gonna have give him some baggage because he stays up late nights worrying about the the boss's money. You know. Give him a little little mark right there. And of course, some some of those traditional elements that carry forth from human beings, maybe an eyebrow. I'm not going to go both full anthropomorphic and give him hands or anything like that. But you can understand where I'm going with this. And get that other fin in there. It's going to come down. It's kind of... There we go. And then, of course, since he does deal with money, he stares at a computer all day. I'm going to give him these big glasses. Right? Because as we know, if you're an accountant, you got to have big bulbous glasses. And if you're smart, you're... <laughs> yeah, if that were true, then... I'd be a millionaire because I have tons of glasses. Okay, and then you know, going in here and just you know, little details here and there. Maybe give him a little bit of continuation, maybe a little bit of stripage. A little bit here and there. That's what I'm really talking about. 
I wonder if I can't erase that. I finally found one of my favorite erasers. Can I erase it? No, it's not erasing. What it's doing is it's just pulling some of that material out of the paper. Because again, these aren't really erasable. They're colored pencils. Made of wax. Let's go ahead and shade in, give a little bit of value to this baggage. And there you go. Not too, sh not too uh, long, right? Didn't take too long. Kind of a smaller fish. This is would be a, a character, a supporting character. You know? <sighs> All right. So that's one. <laughs> okay, let's get him sad, so too beady. See, whenever you do something like this, give him a little bit of iris, a little bit of humanity there. Nose, gotta be careful with my pencil. I don't wanna break it. There we go. Okay. All right, then we go to maybe, uh, maybe some muscle. So this particular type of fish would be more or less, you know, in the context of swimming with the fishes, the, the story, this would be the muscle from the boss. So the muscle being, you know, carry out some of the duties, you know, talk to some of the other fishes. So we're gonna give him a really big chin, right? And a really small, maybe a small tail, kind of a disproportionate, and his eyes are gonna be set high. Maybe he's a grouper, <laughs> okay, you know, and then we'll have, maybe he's got a, a crew cut. So with that, the, the, the hairs or the fin, top fin's going to be neat and tidy, okay. Then we're going to have this brow come out slightly gonna come around and then it's gonna here look at that brow like that again you want to put in whenever you do stuff like this you know I'm always asking you know, what is the what is the purpose of this character what is he doing what is his main function so then we're gonna have this come around here I'm gonna have that kind of cover that up A little bit. Okay, so then let's have the nostril here, here. And we're gonna have the beginning of that mouth. It comes around here. And that head part comes here, that part of that gill. One, two, three. And then again, we're gonna go here, that shape. I want that shape to come around. Let's go ahead and have that come down. I want that chin to be one of the stronger points of this design. Okay. You guys are seeing it exactly how I'm drawing it. It could be a complete failure. Okay, let's have that fin come up. Divides. Divides here. Okay. You notice I didn't go full bore into that particular section of the fish yet, just because I wanted to kind of iron out the overall shape. And now that I have, I'm gonna go back and go back over it. Drawing light is, is one of the things that you can control, especially whenever you're doing a design like this. And then I've got his fins here. He's got big fins. He's like, oh, kind of feeling that. Look at his gills right here, two, three, and he's got this other fin that kind of comes down below. Okay. That brown, there's the other part of that eye right there. A little brow. Okay. Let's go ahead and push this up just slightly. One, two, three, four, five, six. A little bit of value in there. 
You notice I haven't gotten to the chin yet because I haven't really worked out in my brain. I'm paying attention to it, and this is something that you'll you'll start to understand as you progress through. You know, there's a lot of fluidity, there's a lot of organic thought that goes into these things. Um, you know, whenever I'm doing them, and and trying to work out some of those things in my brain as I'm talking to you is challenging. <laughs> it's challenging for me. Um, so please be patient. You know, let's go ahead and have that come here. One, two, three. Okay, it goes down like that. Spot, spot, spot. Okay. All right, now I get to do the chin. Chin comes out. Really? Yeah, there we go. Sometimes you just have to jump. You know, it's got that big... He's got a little squiggly right there. And of course, even though I know the fish don't have these, what we can do is just draw that line right there. And this can be dark. It's got like a five o'clock shadow. Oops. Almost draw my pencil. Yeah, here's a little safety note for you guys. If you have challenges holding on to your pencils, which I do because I draw fast, this helps right here, this little element, this little item, this little doodad. What you can do is you can put your pencil in here and this gets tightened down like so, and it extends, and, uh, this is made by DeWitt, and it extends that little itty bitty piece of uh, pencil you may have left, so you can actually get a little bit more mileage out of it, and, you know. Okay, so what am I doing? Okay, so now, give a couple spots here and there, here and there, very nice, and maybe he's got a little, a couple of little things on his lips. Let's go ahead and draw that other. In there. Nice. Okay. A couple of indication of fins. Very simple. Not getting into it. Let's go ahead and finish this other fin over here. Again, he's like, oh, you mess with me. You, you mess with me, you get the fin. There you go. So you can see the different character types here. You have more or less the the brains, we have a large brain cavity, we have the glasses to indicate some type of reference to study, some type of reference to um, uh, intelligence, and then you have this this hair right here, that even though it is it is in the water, it is, it's a little unkempt, so you can see that, and then I have this baggage right here under the eyeballs, which indicates late nights. Okay, so then you have this one again. Small brain. We're talking. This is a this is a character archetype that that you're referencing. So this would be the bully, the muscle of the group. This would be kind of the money uh, reference. Somebody that you know does the books. Um, small chin, little small chin. Um, uh, you know, here's the jaw, and this comes up like this. But this one, big chin, muscle, and then he has the big, you know, the larger fins and the smaller waist. See, I'm equating this to, again, how I would design a human character. So I'm thinking human characteristics, and I can inject those into the character. Um, into the character. And again, the, I talked about the hair being more kept. Maybe military background. Uh, and I've got that bigger brow that comes around to kind of, you know, caveman-ish. So these little little things that I'm thinking about whenever I design these characters that, that really um, really help me define who they are. So let's go ahead and do this five o'clock shadow, a little bit darker. Here we go. Very nice, very nice. Very nice. I had somebody, I did, actually, somebody comment. It's like, yeah, you, you know, I enjoy listening to you and your stories and stuff like that. I really appreciate that. Trust me. That is awesome. I do have a podcast, and it's called um, Michael Claire to Arts, Tales from the Drawing Desk. And, you know, it's um, on different platforms, uh, currently on Apple. But I need to renew the hosting service, Buzz, um, I forget the name of it, Buzz Point, Buzz Sprite, something. 
um, because you know they want to charge X amount of dollars per month, and I wasn't really to commit. And I think uh, I just need to renew that. And once I do that, then I'll I'll post that up. Okay, so here's two character types, and then we'll get into the final, which would be more or less kind of the kingpin, the um, you know, the head honcho guy. So let's get into him. So he's going to be a little bit different. He's going to be kind of a balance between these two um, individuals. A lot of times, maybe you'll have the muscle that has climbed the ranks, and eventually he will become the kingpin of the uh, of the organization. Um, but for this, um, what I'm going to do here, hopefully I don't mess it up too bad because I don't have a lot of space. Thank you very much, Mike, for, for doing that for me. Yeah, buddy. So with the kingpin, he's got to have a brain, but he's not goofy looking. And then he has to have strength, but he can't be brutish. So there's a balance. He can, you know, he can't be, you know, like a, a massive brute. And he has to have some type of, there. I, I want him to be handsome. So he's not going to be a long fish, because a long fish, I think, has to do with maybe one of the workers or one of the uh, minions or one of the people that serves the boss. So he's got a he's got a little bit more of an importance that you need to consider. Okay, that line of action. So you know, of course, you know you reference things in your brain, movies that you you think about whenever you do stuff like this. And of course, I'm going to think about The Godfather. You know, and I've, I've got that going off in my head, you know, doing imitations of, uh, you know, the Godfather Corleone. And, you know, of course, he's got to have that calm demeanor until he snaps, you know, boom! And then he snaps and then it's all on, you know. He, he Even though he's the intelligence of the group, he also has the ability to become super violent and take care of situations because he does have part of this character in him. So let's go ahead... And he's a little more cut and dry, black and white, so I don't want him to have um, too much flowing stuff. I want him to be more geometric. Maybe. Okay. So as you see, I keep doing things like this and this and this, and that helps me identify this as a form. So whenever I do that, I can put things in their rightful place and know that, yes, this is where that particular, uh, you know, that particular item goes um, anatomy-wise. So I've already drawn in sort of his eye line here. So we're going to have that come around. Come here. Got his nose. You know, I've got that brow. And I'm going to have his eyes come down. And he loves his family. He's all about the family. So he's got these little bit of a poof right there on his cheek. He loves to eat with his family. Let's go ahead and put these. I don't wanna I don't wanna expose his entire pupil because that would be, you know, a surprise. Again, uh, you know, whenever animals attack, their pupils, and depending on the action, will contract. So we're gonna have him very calm. We're gonna have that little bit of eye shine right there. He's very calm, he's a calm customer. Okay. Let's double up on that lid. I want that lid to be a little bit more prominent right there. So we're going to go ahead and draw in the gills. Two, three. We're going to have, again, we're thinking geometry. So even whenever you do, you know, instead of having flowing shapes, you know, muscular, you have these flowing shapes for a little more gentle. But whenever you get into uh, understanding how geometry and shape language affects um, the viewer, then you'll get a little bit more understanding of why I'm putting this a little bit harder, like these corners. So 
And then we're going to have kind of a widow's peak. I want that this face to be, you know, again, he's handsome. So I'll have that come here. We're going to shade that in. Put a little bit of value in there to give him maybe an indication of hair. He takes care of himself. He didn't get to this position overnight. He's worked hard. And you don't want to mess with him, so we're going to give him that lip. Let's go ahead and have that right there. That's an indication of the lip. Okay. Baggage. Baggage is important. Baggage, you know, I call it baggage, but it's the bags under the eyes that, again, will kind of denote, yeah, he does have some sleepless nights because he has to worry about the safety of his family. All of those things. So let's go ahead and do this. That line's going to come over that one. Again, because we have a forward space and then a back space. So you want that forward space line to kind of go over and then that back space line. So we'll have that come around here like that. Even if we want to go so far as to really outline the corners of his eye a little bit to kind of accentuate that area. Okay, let's go ahead and do this. Watch your tangencies. Shade that in as a silhouette. You know. Okay, let's go ahead and reconfirm and reaffirm some of those areas. A little bit less round, a little more ge geometric. Yeah. Okay. Drawing. And what's always good is whenever you do stuff like this, obviously they're underwater. So I like to give a little indication of maybe some bubbles. Blah, blah. And just that little indication will really help sell this as fish. You can even go in so far as to shading one or two of them with a little eye shine, a little indication of light. And these, this kind of page, you know, I would do, you know, maybe five or six or seven or eight, ten pages like this, three. So you get in there and you feel out the world and what makes sense and what shapes. So you can tell, I start, I mean, these shapes are really simple. Bean, there's a bean, kind of a squash bean. And it's basically you're squashing and stretching those forms to kind of suit the character uh, types um, that you're drawing. You know? That's a lot of times you'll have, again, that dark circle around the eyes. Because he's a good looking, he's a good looking fish, guys. <laughs> Come on over here, Joey. I gotta talk to you. You know? That is if they're based in like New York or Chicago or somewhere place like that. If they're based in Russia, you know, he's like, get over here, Vlad, I need to talk to you. I need you to go see Ivan. You need to collect. All right, you guys, that's all I had for you today. Hopefully you liked what you see. Please like and subscribe, hit that notification bell. We're doing lots of videos, short little videos like this. We're doing some long tutorials. We're doing some other stuff. So definitely stay in touch and go out and enjoy the world. Man, the news. I read the news yesterday and I had to stop. <laughs> had to stop, had to come in and draw. I'm like, I read the news, I gotta come in and draw. Sometimes it's the little things like this that help carry you through the day. Right? We'll see you next time, guys. Bye.